What is the Gospel? Introduction to John Part 7 Come to Christ, receive the food that endures to eternal life. John chapter 6 verses 16 to 40 When evening came, his disciples went down to the lake, got into a boat and started across the lake to Capernaum. It was now dark and Jesus hadn't yet come to them. The lake became rough because a strong wind was blowing. When they'd rowed about three or four miles, they saw Jesus walking on the lake and coming near the boat, and they were terrified. But he said to them, It is I, do not be afraid. Then they wanted to take him into the boat, and immediately the boat reached the land towards which they were going. The next day, the crowd that had stayed on the other side of the lake saw that there had been only one boat there. They also saw that Jesus had not got into the boat with his disciples, but that his disciples had gone away alone. Then some boats from Tiberias came near the place where they'd eaten the bread after the Lord had given thanks. So when the crowd saw that neither Jesus nor his disciples were there, they themselves got into the boats and went to Capernaum looking for Jesus. When they found him on the other side of the lake, they said to him, Rabbi, when did you come here? Jesus answered them, Very truly I tell you, you're looking for me, not because you saw signs, but because you ate your fill of the loaves. Don't work for the food that perishes but for the food that endures for eternal life, which the Son of Man will give you. For it's on him that God the Father has set his seal. Then they said to him, Well, what must we do to perform the works of God? Jesus answered them, This is the work of God that you believe in him whom he has sent. So they said to him, what, what, what sign are you going to give us then, so that we may see it and believe you? What work are you performing? Our ancestors ate the manna in the wilderness, as it is written. He gave them bread from heaven to eat. Then Jesus said to them, very truly I tell you, it was not Moses who gave you the bread from heaven, but it's my Father who gives you the true bread from heaven. For the bread of God is that which comes down from heaven and gives life to the world. They said to him, Sir, Give us this bread always. Then Jesus said to them, I am the bread of life. Whoever comes to me will never be hungry, and whoever believes in me will never be thirsty. But I said to you that you have seen me, and yet do not believe. Everything that the Father gives me will come to me, and anyone who comes to me I will never drive away. For I've come down from heaven not to do my will, but the will of him who sent me. 
And this is the will of him who sent me, that I should lose nothing of all that he's given me, but raise it up on the last day. This is indeed the will of my Father, that all who see the Son and believe in him may have eternal life, and I will raise them up on the last day. Sentence five of our gospel in six sentences. Christ rose from the dead and we can have eternal life in him. Before today's passage, John recounts how Jesus miraculously fed the 5,000. After that, crowds followed him as the great prophet who healed the sick and gave out free bread. But that was all they saw. They couldn't see the much greater meaning of the sign. Jesus isn't someone who just grants all our desires for physical health and provision of material wants. Jesus is the very word of God himself who came down to us in the form of a man. His disciples saw it and it scared them out of their wits. Caught in a squall on, in the dark on Lake Galilee, they saw Christ walking to them over the water. For sinful people like us to realise we're face to face with our God should make us afraid. Jesus, however, reassures it is I. Do not be afraid. The disciples then wanted to take him into the boat, and immediately the boat reached the land towards which they were going. On our present rough sea, the good news is that we too can take Christ into our lives. With him, we immediately reach the land. Straight away, we have eternal life. With Christ, our future is that certain. All the details of heaven may yet be unclear to us. But this we do know. Christ will be there as he is with us now. Now we see him by faith. Then it will be face to face. The crowds followed Jesus because he'd given them bread. He told them about something far better, however, the food that endures for eternal life. You have nothing to do apart from receive what the Son of Man will give you. We can't earn it. We can't deserve it. Good works or religious observances will not achieve it. All we have to do is believe in him whom God has sent. Don't ask for more signs. Don't say, I'll believe if. The signs already recorded in scripture are enough. We just need to be able to see through the amazing things that Jesus did to what they point to. He is the son of God. He came to us as a man taking the title, the son of man. As the word of God, however, from the beginning, he was with God 
and was God. The Israelites were given manna as they journeyed to their promised land. A bread from heaven that was there in the morning and then disappeared. Christ is the true bread from heaven. He gives life to the world. I am the bread of life, he said. Whoever comes to me will never be hungry, and whoever believes in me will never be thirsty. His bread is forever. With his bread, we need want for nothing else. And his bread is himself. Each day, we can feed on him. We receive him into our lives and walk each day with him. He's the word of God and God's word is recorded for us in our Bibles. Reading our Bibles each day, we can feed on that word of God and in him have life. Believing in him involves a relationship, one of trust, commitment and obedience to our Lord. The relationship has two aspects, God's sovereignty and our responsibility. Everything that the Father gives me will come to me and anyone who comes to me I will never drive away. All the Father gives will come. Anyone who comes will never be sent away. Jesus said his Father's will was that all who see the Son and believe in him may have eternal life and I will raise them up on the last day. Christ himself has risen from the dead and at the end of this life he will raise us up also. This is the gospel. We've been given eternal life with Christ. Because he rose from the dead, so will we. By faith. Our life is so bound up in Christ that it is in Christ. If you've never done so before, receive Christ into your life now.